Hey guys, Pastor Courtney here. Just want to make a quick announcement before I start my Devo today. We love making these Devos for you and we want to make sure that the people who want to see them will keep seeing them. So in order to do this, we are going to start an email list specifically for these devotionals. So if you would like to be on that list, all you have to do is sign up on the link at the beginning of this devotional email and you'll be on the list. We're gonna make the switch next Tuesday, so you just need to get signed up if you wanna keep receiving devotional videos via email. We're gonna to continue to post them on YouTube and Facebook, so if that's where you're used to seeing them, then you don't need to do anything except for keep watching. Now, I was gonna share a completely different Devo thought with you today about weeding and watering. And I think I'm gonna save it for next time because it does have a lot of spiritual implications, <laughs> believe me. But, I'm gonna do something different today because God whispered to my heart this morning something a little different to share with you. And I had a good cry about it, actually. <laughs> I'll admit it, never underestimate the power of a good cry with the Lord. It can be so healing to the soul. So I had a good cry. But now that I have things together a little bit, I wanna to talk to you about legacy. The other day, I was watching a cooking video on Facebook. There seemed to be so many and a random video comes up after that video about Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Now, normally that's not something that I would watch, but something that they said in the first 30 seconds caught my attention, and that was the word legacy. So this woman's trying out to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, and she's referred to as a legacy because her mom had been a cheerleader before her. And they talk about how all her life, since she was three years old, she had been training with the intent to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. And she was just so determined, awesome athlete, and they referred to her as her mother's living legacy. And I couldn't stop thinking about that, that word, legacy. I was thinking, when we get to heaven, will God say, you were a great athlete, or you got millions of likes on social media, or you work thousands of hours of overtime, you've made it, come on in. Those aren't necessarily bad things, but I think we both know that that's not what it's all about. So what should be our legacy? It's a question that we need to ask. It runs along the same lines as another challenging question. Maybe you've heard it before. What will you do with your dash? You know, the dash between the two dates on a tombstone? And both questions remind us that we're only on this earth a little while. I listened to a song this morning by Stephanie Gretzinger that stopped me in my tracks and it actually what prompted my really good cry. Halfway through the song, these are the lyrics. It says, let my children tell their children, let this be their memory, that all my treasure was in heaven and you were everything to me. And after that, you can bet Jesus and I had a good chat about priorities <laughs> and I encourage you to do the same today too. You know, the people that our life touches your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your coworkers, your family members. When we're just a memory on this earth, those people will be our living legacy. But not only is a legacy something we leave behind, it's also a work in progress. It's woven every day into the lives of those around us through our words and our actions. As a young person, my grandpa Paul wove a legacy of faith in my life. Every morning, and I mean every morning, even when he was sick, when he didn't feel like it, he made time to be in God's word. And by watching his faithfulness day after day, that priority was woven into the very fabric of who I am. And both now and then, that hunger for God's word became my grandpa's living legacy. And it's the first thing I think about when he comes to mind. You know, my greatest joy, beyond that I was a good mama or a hard worker, beyond the things that I'll accomplish on earth or the treasures I'll collect, my greatest joy would be for the number one memory of my children to be that their mama leaned on Jesus every day, that she treasured her relationship with him more than anything else. I want the testimony on their lips to be that God was everything to my mama and he's everything to me. Last week, I read a story with my kiddos that really hit me when I was thinking about all this today. And it comes from Matthew chapter 13. You know, I love my Jesus storybook Bible. This is called Treasure Hunt. One day, Jesus was telling people about God's kingdom. God's kingdom is wherever God is king. Jesus told them it's wherever God is in charge. It's where he fills your heart up with his forever happiness and you stop running away from him and you love him. 
but sometimes people couldn't understand things very well. So Jesus helped them by telling them stories called parables. Jesus said, God's kingdom is like a hidden treasure. And then he told them this story. Once upon a time, there was a man working in a field digging. So there he is digging. But what he doesn't know is that in the field, there is buried treasure. So dig, 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 clink, clank, clonk. Uh-oh, his shovel bumps into something hard. Hello, what's this? He picks it up, dusts it off. It's a chest. It's rusted and locked, but creak. He pries it open. What he sees inside takes his breath away. Beautiful, glittering, gleaming, twinkling, sparkling, precious jewels. It's a treasure chest. Now he wants that treasure. He needs that treasure. He must have that treasure somehow, even if he has to sell everything he has so he can pay for it. He quickly buries that treasure again, runs home and sells everything that he has. He takes money from the sale and goes and buys that field. Now he owns the field and the treasure that's buried in it. He runs back and digs up the treasure again. Jesus said coming home to God is as wonderful as finding a treasure. You might have to dig before you find it. You might have to look before you see it. You might even have to give up everything you have for it. But being where God is, being in his kingdom, that's more important than anything else in all the world. It's worth anything you have to give up, Jesus told them, because God is the real treasure. I love how it says, being where God is, being in his kingdom, that's more important than anything else in all the world. Even if it means we have to give up other things to make that treasure the main thing. God's word reminds us many times that we can do a lot of good things here on earth, but only the things we do for God will last. Would we be willing to give up earthly accolades and worldly wows to make him our legacy, both now and when we're gone? I challenge you to take a moment today and simply ask God what you can do for him that will last. What does he want to be your living legacy? Let me pray for you today. Jesus, I thank you for my friends. Thank you for my New Hope fam, God. I know that they are so close to your heart, God, and treasured by you. And Jesus, I pray today that you would reveal to us through your Holy Spirit the truth of who you are and who you want us to be, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be our priority, that we would have eternity in mind. That thought, what will be my living legacy? What will I do with my dash? I pray, God, that you would remind us of the treasure that you are and the treasure that you have for us to pass on to those around us. God, we love you so much, and we thank you that you're always teaching, always changing our hearts. Make us more like you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye.